Hello and welcome everybody. I'm Stephen and I'm a popular investor on eToro and my eToro username is bees84. Thanks very much for listening to this video today and as usual please take the time now to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate that and I've had quite a few new subscribers recently. If you haven't checked it out yet, please check out my last eToro Popular Investors Forum, which I uploaded a few days ago. We had a really great panelists and we had some really good deeper discussions about the economy where you can hear more about my thoughts and the other panelists thoughts on that video. So check that out if you haven't done so already. So today's video, I'm going to be covering what happened in the markets last week. And I'm also going to be talking about a little bit more in detail about whether we're in for a kind of a roaring recovery, which we've had in January so far, or whether it's a little bit of a fake out. So as we move on to last week, our performance was actually really good. Uh, and we performed at over 3.5% up for last week. If we compare that to uh, some of our benchmarks, uh, the NASDAQ was up a bit more at about 4.3% as it was a really good week for growth stocks, uh, as well as the S&P 500, which was up about 2.5%, and the FTSE 100 was up just under 0.1%, and Bitcoin was up about 3.26% for last week. Basically, last week, it was a very strong week for U.S. markets, as I said, particularly growth stocks. Uh, Europe also performed reasonably well, and uh, Chinese stocks continue to flourish after you know, we're starting to see strength after the reopening. We're also seeing crypto continuing its bounce back, and uh, Bitcoin and other crypto and altcoins uh, have actually performed really well so far in 2023, and we are starting to see uh, some good signs that we have already bottomed and we are now moving into a new higher range. I also did lots of short-term trades last week. Um, I had some success in the US dollar uh, and the Swedish krona uh, pair, as well as some other short-term successes in wheat and natural gas. And I will continue to do those short-term positions with a small portion of my portfolio. Also, I closed a medium-term position in uh, Zscaler, uh, which I'd had open just for kind of a few weeks, uh, and that closed at 6% profit. The main reason I did that is because I am trying to just slowly reduce uh, my technology and growth stock uh, allocation in my portfolio, because uh, although uh, things have started to bounce back, uh, there are still some risks in the rearview mirror. So if we look at 2023 so far, and albeit we've just nearly passed uh, the month in January, um, our portfolio is up a whopping 19.53%. So it's performed extremely well and it's bounced back um, from last year, which I'm really pleased about. I knew a lot of the stocks in our portfolio that I was going to have to be patient with uh, and also crypto and Chinese stocks hadn't performed so well last year. And now that they've had a really good uh, bounce back, I think some of my theses uh, were just delayed. And I think that it's going to be a good year for our portfolio moving forward. And we're outperforming all the other uh, indices uh, and our main benchmarks, such as the NASDAQ, which is up about 11% for the year. The S&P is up about 6%. Uh, the FTSE is up uh, just over 4%. And the Hang Seng Index, which is the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, is up about 13.02%. And Bitcoin is up 43.21%. So as our portfolio has a fairly heavy uh, Chinese uh, component, Chinese stock component to our portfolio, and also has um, a fairly heavy uh, crypto exposure as well, uh, our portfolio has managed to outperform uh, the major indices, and I'm pretty positive moving into 2023, although I must say that there's still some risks on the horizon. As we look now at the main news last week, as I said, the stocks continued um, resuming their winning streak. 
Uh, and that is because there was some hopeful signals uh, that the economy might be able to uh, hold back a recession in 2023. And if they can't, that it will be a fairly light recession. Uh, growth stocks outperformed value stocks, uh, mainly because they were very kind of beaten down uh, in 2022. Also, there is uh, renewed hopes that the next FOMC meeting of the Fed, that they will raise uh, interest rates by only 0.25 or 25 basis points, uh, which would be uh, the lowest raise in a long time. And it does give some hope that uh, the Fed's uh, policy in terms of interest rates may be starting to uh, slow down and that inflation is starting to come down, which I'll talk about a little bit in detail later. There was also a big jump in Tesla shares over the week. Uh, that's following a favorable outlook from CEO uh, Elon Musk. Also, we saw uh, the Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, and she said that she was encouraged about the falling energy prices and the easing supply chain bottlenecks that were there in 2022. And she's saying that she expects a calling global inflation. Uh, and this provided some bullish sentiment to the market, uh, especially, as I said, um, that it is expected that they are going to move those interest rates to 0.25% uh, increases at the nef next FOMC meeting. There was also some hopeful data. Uh, the core CPI, which includes uh, excludes food and energy, uh, rose by 4.4% over the year, and, and that is well below its 5.4% peak in uh, February 2022, and that is the slowest pace that it's ha had gathered in 14 months. So we are clearly starting to see uh, a reduction in some of those inflation pressures, uh, especially considering that there is a lag um, in, in time periods between them. We also saw some disappointing week for earnings reports. I think over 20% of all companies in the S&P 500 actually released the earning reports last week and Microsoft uh, fell sharply. And this is after the company reported a large and expected decline in earnings uh, and a mainly a slump in revenues. There was other weak performers as well who... Um, provided the earnings reports last week, such as IBM and Intel. So we are starting to see some of those effects in the economy of consumers spending less money, um, which is starting to be seen now in the earnings reports of some of these large companies. We also saw the ECB president, uh, Christine Lagarde, and she has been repeatedly calling over the last couple of weeks and actually over the last couple of months uh, for significant rate increases in February and March. Um, that is because mainly Europe started the interest rate increases much uh, later and less uh, strongly than the US did and it's going to take some time for them to be able to battle uh, that inflation. And the U.S. is starting to see good progress, but it's going to take a little bit longer for uh, Europe in general. So it's expected that there could be some sharp increase, interest rate increases in Europe over the next few months. Uh, there's also business activity in the eurozone uh, unexpectedly stabilized in January uh, and that is after uh, contracting uh, for six months. So although it's still very early days, um, it's quite promising that the business activity in, Euro in the Eurozone is starting to stabilize um, after we had a lot of contraction. China is also doing pretty well. So China last week was on the Lunar New Year holidays for the majority of the week, and the markets opened back up on Thursday and it traded marginally up. Uh, there's a lot of optimism uh, around uh, faster than anticipated economic recovery. Um, many people went away during the break, uh, visit their families around the country, and there is real hope that people are going to start spending. Uh, there was also a, a report as well, which said that the household bank deposits grew by a record um, 
17.8 trillion uh, RMB in 2022. And that is mainly because uh, people didn't have a lot of money, a lot of things to spend their money on uh, as they stayed at home. So it's hoping that a lot of that money uh, will start to flow back into the economy in China. But uh, it must be noted that that could take a little bit of time to flow into the wider economy. As we look at our top three performing stocks for last week, our top performing stock last week was Magnite, which was up about 16.78%. Uh, and that is um, did pretty well last week as growth stocks um, started to climb and started to have a bounce back. And there was obviously a lot of speculation that the recession uh, might not be as bad or might not happen at all um, as expected. And this is generally pretty good for advertising companies. The second best performing stock last week is Coinbase, which was up about 11.26%. Uh, and that is mainly to do with the trading volumes increasing in crypto, as there's been some nice private price movement over the last couple of weeks. We also saw Block, which was formerly known as Square, which was up about 10.07% for the week. So as we move on to our Death by Charts edition, and I wanted to uh, point out the chart to the left uh, to begin with. And this chart shows that CPI inflation is starting to slow down. As we saw the inflation rate in June, which was at the peak, June 2022, uh, hit about 9.1. Uh, and now we're seeing um, year on year inflation actually start to move down. It's now at about 5.49%. Uh, so we're starting to see uh, a decrease in that CPI inflation. A lot of that is to do with the reducing in energy costs. And we are starting, as I will show in a moment, to see a reduction in that uh, accommodation, rental rates, and other things that affect um, the CPI readings. The second chart I wanted to show you to the right shows that the PPI, so that's the producer price index, actually peaked in 2022 in March at about 11.7%. And we've seen a big reduction. And actually now it's at its lowest since March 2021 on a year on year basis at about 6.24%. So even the PPI uh, producer index is showing good signs that inflation might be starting uh, to quell. So the question on everybody's lips is, will the Fed overcompensate by increasing those interest rates? And then you get into a situation uh, potentially later on the year if they're held at those interest rates for a prolonged period of time, uh, where you might start to see lower than expected uh, inflation which could also cause issues for the economy a little bit later. Uh, I, I tend to think my personal opinion is that at the next meeting, they're probably quite likely to increase by 0.25%. Uh, and then I think after that, they're probably going to hold it um, at those levels for a sustained period of time. I don't know, it would depend on how the economy actually plays out. Um, but and it also will depend on those unemployment rates. I think unemployment rates will uh, spike slightly over the next couple of months and we'll see what happens with inflation. But it's quite clear that the actual Fed's efforts are starting to work. And I'm actually a little bit surprised that the market hasn't broken yet at such high and fast uh, interest rate rises. If we also look at this chart that I'm showing now, and this is the U.S. monthly rent uh, versus the U.S. shelter CPI. So sh the U.S. shelter CPI makes up quite a large component of the wider uh, CPI. And as you can see, it continued to increase over 2020 to 2021 to 2022. And now we are starting to see a little bit of a come down uh, in terms of those um, U.S. rental apartment rates. 
Uh, and we've kind of seen a slight increase over the years as well in those shelter CPIs. However, it is expected that the shelter CPI uh, does have a lag in it. And as we continue to see the reduction in rental prices over the next couple of months, we should start to see a reduction in that shelter CPI figure uh, as well. And they should kind of meet much closer together. So it's all quite positive signs in terms of economic data. And, and it seems very weird that I'm saying that is positive signs because, uh, you know, rents are coming down uh, and, and other things. But actually, it's pretty positive overall for the overall economy because they had heated up significantly over the last couple of years. And by uh, there being a reduction in those things, that it makes it much less likely that the Fed will continue to increase rates at the levels that they had done previously. So as we move on to crypto news and views, so it's actually been a really great start to 2022, 2023, sorry, I'm living in the past, uh, for, for crypto. And Bitcoin actually reached uh, 23. 3,500 this week. Uh, that's up pretty significantly from the lows we experienced in, I think it was November, uh, at around 15,500 odd. Um, so we've seen a really good bounce back. What I'm kind of expecting in 2023 is that we will have a year where we will um, reach a new range. Um, so I think we have now reached the bottom. Um, that is kind of my base case scenario. There are still some risks and some potential more fallout from some of the situations that we've had this year, such as FTX. But I am expecting that. I think my base case is that we have already uh, reached the bottom. And what I think is I think it will follow a very similar pattern to 2019 where we'll have a much wider range and i'm expecting that range to be anywhere from kind of 20 to 40 to 45 thousand dollars i don't think we will hit a new all-time high uh, in this year and i don't think that's likely until the bitcoin halving in 2000 and uh, 2024 around about may but it did follow a very similar pattern in 2019 where we hit that bottom and then it kind of we hit the bottom at about 3500 and then from there it went up to about 12000 so we could see a quite a significant bounce um, from where we are but it's going to be very volatile and this could go up and down some other very positive data as well is that the realized returns actually flip positive uh, and that is because that the realized returns, what they basically are is over the uh, months and years, however you measure it, it actually takes uh, into account the price that people actually bought uh, Bitcoin in. And it actually shows whether they're in profit or they're in loss. Uh, so it now shows that um, the average most people are in slight profit who have been holding Bitcoin for a significant uh, period of time. And that is seen as pretty good in the market because now people are kind of cutting small amounts of profit instead of cutting uh, losses that they have on crypto. Of course, if people were buying in at the all time highs, uh, they're going to be uh, still at a loss. Um, but hopefully lots of people such as myself took the opportunity uh, to dollar cost average during those lows. It's also been a very strong couple of weeks for gaming. Uh, and we've seen uh, tokens such as uh, Gala Games, which have gone up significantly, double, tripled um, through, throughout that month. We've also seen Bitcoin usage and premium skyrocket in Nigeria. And the main reason there is that is that the government has started to limit ATM withdrawals from the bank. Uh, whenever you see governments that are meddling in how much money citizens can take out of the bank, this usually leads to um, a spike in premium rates in that specific country. So in this case, uh, Nigeria is because uh, people want to have decentralized money and 
uh, money that cannot uh, be censored or taken from them. Last week as well, we also saw the FTX creditors list that was released. And this had a huge amount of uh, large companies from different industries that were mentioned in it, such as um, hotels, charities, banks, venture capital firms, media outlets, and other crypto companies. So it really showed the wider impact that FTX had on the overall uh, industry and some of the major companies that were tied up with them. Uh, it's also been speculated that Silvergate Capital, uh, which is a crypto friendly bank, it could start to be a prime target for acquisition. Uh, and this is due to uh, the recent venture capital investment. Uh, there's been a dr drastic decline in the valuation and a leaner, resilient operational model. Uh, however, obviously, there are still a lot of risks there. Uh, with as Silvergate have been extremely affected by the crypto uh, downturn and some of the major companies going under, such as FTX. So this is the chart that I was referring to a little bit earlier, where we've seen Bitcoin realized uh, profit loss and which has uh, flipped positive. As you can see uh, from these charts, uh, the first chart is the 30-day moving average, as you can see, um, just stepped, kind of stepped over that line um, into uh, profit, uh, which is a you know a positive a catalyst because it's a, a very psychological impact that it has on participants. That if people are making profit, they're much less likely to sell their positions uh, in a loss. Uh, and you may see some cutting of profits over the next couple of weeks, but I, I think it's generally pretty uh, positive. And the other chart to the right is a, a similar model uh, over the years from uh, Plan B. Uh, and this shows, again, that um, we're in realized profit um, over the, from, from the cost price of people buying Bitcoin. So it's very positive, I think, at the moment uh, from crypto. Uh, please note that there will be some volatility. I'm not going to be jumping in the market. I think everybody expects when crypto becomes very positive that you're going to start buying and you're going to start buying these pumps. Um, I did the majority of my buying during the tough times in November, December, when nobody wanted to buy uh, Bitcoin or crypto, that was the best time to buy uh, into uh, the markets in crypto. Um, so I have do have some buy orders if there is another dip uh, in the market, uh, but I'm quite happy with my crypto exposure uh, at the moment. And I'm quite happy with the way uh, that the whole portfolio is kind of made up of stocks, uh, crypto, uh, precious metals and some other things. Also a side note as well, as I said in our recent investor forum, I'm very positive about uh, gold and silver and also gold and silver miners in 2023. Uh, so they have started off the year pretty well uh, as well. And we're not that far off all-time highs in gold. I think we're about 10% off all-time highs in gold. I said as well that I expect silver to outperform gold this year. That's why I have a slightly higher uh, weighting of silver in our portfolio compared with gold. Uh, but I still have a significant amount of gold. And we also have some miners uh, which are captured in the GDX uh, mining ETF that we have in our portfolio. So all in all, I'm pretty positive about this year. However, we need to keep looking at all of the data as it comes to us. And we need to make sure that um, we're not hit with a significant uh, recession. Um, and I will keep uh, my ears to the ground. I keep watching uh, educational resources. I'm watching podcasts all the time. And I'm really trying to get a feel from, for what I think will happen in the market. So I'm willing to be pretty flexible in that regard in terms of our portfolio. I may also consider putting a few uh, short positions in a few indices. I'm kind of leaning towards Europe at the moment because I expect the recovery to be a lot slower. 
Germany indices, for example, are uh, approaching uh, very high levels over the last kind of year or so. Um, so I may look at that and some other areas for putting some hedges in place in order to make sure that we keep these gains that we have accumulated so far in 2023. So that's it, folks. Thanks very much and have a great week ahead.